I will remember that there is art to medicine as well as science and that warmth, sympathy, and understanding may outweigh the surgeon's knife or the chemist's drug. That is a small part of the modern Hippocratic Oath that many doctors swear to abide by when they begin practicing as physicians. As a student who hopes to become a doctor one day, I plan on eventually taking that oath and living by it throughout my career. Unfortunately, that goal is in jeopardy due to the fact that the United States healthcare system is flawed. In 2018, 8.5% of the U.S. population did not have access to health insurance. That is 28 million people who had to pay for the expensive health care costs and medical bills all on their own. The three main ways we can make health care more accessible and affordable for Americans is by regulating the costs of private insurance, making preventative services and wellness checks free for all individuals, and having Medicare and Medicaid pay doctors more for their services. From 1985 to 2010, the average cost of insurance went from $95 per month to $1,148 per month, an increase of over $1,000. Rising healthcare costs can produce issues. As uh, Associate Professor Hao Yu and Senior Economist with the RAND Corporation, Andrew Dick, found. Their study discovered that rising healthcare costs have reduced the availability of employer-based private insurance, or EBPI. And they also noted that, may, or that regulating the costs, healthcare costs, may be essential for maintaining the role of EBPI in our healthcare system. I'm currently on an EBPI through my dad and his job. If he lost his job or his job decided to stop offering him insurance, myself and my family would no longer be able to have access to the same healthcare services we received before. If we regulate how much private insurance costs, that will make it more available to more people through employer-based private insurance or through their own private insurance plan. Now, despite the recent controversy, vaccines are an essential part of any society in their prevention of illness. The WHO estimates that two to three million deaths are prevented each year through the use of vaccines. I personally went to get a vaccine one month ago and I was getting a flu shot, but my insurance did not cover it due to the fact that there was an error on my dad's account. This meant I had a choice to make. I could either pay the $25 to get the flu vaccine, or I could put my health, potentially put my health at a greater risk and save the money. This is a dilemma that many people without insurance face on a daily basis. Luckily, it was an easy decision for me as the $25 is very affordable, but for someone who may have to choose between getting the vaccine and putting food on the table, that's not an easy decision. Finally, Medicare and Medicaid, which are government programs that provide health care to impoverished and elderly citizens, cover about one in three Americans. And renowned medical doctors Bill Frist and Drew Altman have noted that since their inception, life expectancy has increased. However, they make up about 39% of physician revenue and they do not pay doctors as much as commercial insurance does for the same procedures. This causes some doctors to choose to not accept Medicare or Medicaid patients and will, refuses to private, provide them services. If we increase how much Medicare and Medicaid pays doctors, that will not only make those uh, services available to susceptible populations, that will also cause those doctors to charge uh, uninsured patients less because they don't need to compensate as much for the discrepancy. This will improve the quality of health care for people like my mom who recently went on Medicare. Now, some may argue that these changes would produce an increase in taxes that do not benefit everyone equally. However, it would be a fair trade-off considering we could offer essential services to people who otherwise would not have access to them and improve their overall health and quality of life. Now that we've discussed how we can improve the American healthcare system by regulating the cost of private insurance, making preventative services free of charge, and having Medicare and Medicaid pay doctors more, some of you may be wondering, what can you do to help? Well, you can fill out a senator contact form like the one you see here for Texas Senator 
Ted Cruz and ask them to impl implement these changes. Or if you feel like policymakers may not produce the desired change, you can contribute directly to uninsured populations by donating money and, or your time through volunteering to local hospitals, such as Ascension Providence located here in Waco, just 15 minutes away from campus. Don't let another day go by without fighting for those who do not have access to the same health care as you do, because doctors aren't the only one who can save lives. Thank you.